Ah, the holiday season. We put up our decorations, shop the latest deals, and invite extended family members over for huge feasts. For many of us, these traditions also include a lot of classic holiday films. Often topping the list, Home Alone and its sequel, Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. While watching the antics of little Kevin McAllister year after year, people may wonder about the star, Macaulay Culkin. In the 90s, he was arguably one of the biggest child stars and actors in general. But what happened? Well, we'll tell you, and the next time you sit down to watch Home Alone, you'll know about the rise and fall of Macaulay Culkin and how the child star went from marquee films to reclusive life of riches without the fame attached to it. Before you watch, make your battle plan and click subscribe. You'll join our notification squad and be the first to know of new Screen Rant content. A quick glance at Macaulay Culkin's IMDb page showcases a lot of movies in very little time. The 1990s was packed with films, television shows, and guest appearances on various programs. Culkin was in his preteens and working more than most adults. Then after 1994, apparently it all ended. Nine years without a big screen credit, and our vision of Macaulay Culkin was left with the roles he played as a child star. So what happened? How did Macaulay Culkin go from multiple big screen projects in 1994 to disappearing from Hollywood for nearly a decade? Did he follow the path as so many other child stars, getting older and losing out on roles? Well, not quite. And like many things in Hollywood, the story of Macaulay Culkin is not so simple. But before we get to the adult-sized Macaulay, we must first look at the fun-sized Macaulay, the young, innocent-looking boy who became a megastar. Raised in a family with six siblings, Macaulay was the third born and right in the middle of the Culkin clan. The family was extremely close, both physically and emotionally, especially considering they all shared a one-bedroom apartment in New York City. While his two older siblings didn't do much in show business, Macaulay was drawn to the world of showbiz because of his father, Christopher Culkin, often called Kit for short. Kit was involved in acting, but never received the same mainstream success as his children. Thus, seeing a way to live vicariously through the Culkin clan, Kit set out to essentially create a child star empire. And it worked. Throughout the 80s, Macaulay Culkin had several small roles before he got his big break in the John Candy comedy Uncle Buck. Playing one of Buck's nephews, Culkin's wit and charm shined on the screen, and writer-director John Hughes took notice. While Uncle Buck was in production, John Hughes was developing a whole different type of film, with a premise appealing to children of all ages. By now, we all know the plot of the film. A young boy is accidentally left behind by his family when they travel to France for Christmas vacation. On paper, the film had everything. Goofy criminals, sledding stunts down the stairs, a mysterious old man, the thrill of staying home alone as a child, ingenious traps, and a whole lot of Christmas songs. But the key to success would be finding a young actor suitable for the role of Kevin McAllister. For Hughes, Culkin was his top choice thanks to his scene-stealing skills in Uncle Buck. At just the age of nine years old, Culkin was filming his first starring role in Home Alone, a role that would literally change his life forever. Macaulay was in nearly every scene, putting a lot of pressure on the young star to perform. Macaulay wasn't all alone while filming, though, as it became a sort of family affair. His young brother Kieran Culkin was cast as Kevin McAllister's cousin Fuller. And while we obviously never see him on screen, Kid Culkin had a huge hand in his son's roles because he was also playing the part of the manager. Despite Macaulay's natural acting skills, Kit himself was tough to handle for many producers and directors. He was very controlling, and the tension was only building as Culkin booked more roles. But more on that later. Little did Culkin know at the time what an impact Home Alone would have on his career and Christmas in general. Who knew paint can stunts, loose tarantulas, cardboard cutouts of Michael Jordan, and a stolen toothbrush would lead to so much success? Home Alone was a box office hit and made Culkin an instant star. For 12 weeks, the movie was number one at the box office and ended up making over $250 million overall. The box office streak is almost unheard of these days, and many movies end up getting released on Blu-ray or digital just after the 12-week mark. He chewed up the screen with many classic lines. I made my family disappear. This is it. Don't get scared now. Buzz, your girlfriend. Woof. And no one can forget his famous scream that became a huge part of the marketing campaign. Not only was Culkin earning millions of fans on the big screen, but he started doing the rounds all over television, too. There were numerous talk show guest appearances, interviews, and he became one of the youngest hosts of Saturday Night Live ever, only bested by a very young Drew Barrymore back in the 1980s. If you thought the young star was spread too thin, well, he probably was. With both of his parents serving as manager and collecting 15% of everything Culkin earned, Kit pushed his son harder than ever before after the success of Home Alone. 
To help Culkin thrive in the cutthroat world of Hollywood, he was very persistent about his son learning his lines, even when it came to hosting Saturday Night Live. Even though guest hosts and the cast members themselves used cue cards when needed during scenes, Culkin's father banned him from them and forced his son to memorize the lines for every single sketch. In any given week, there could be 13 to 20 sketches written for a show, with the very best selected for air. The pressures for Culkin to perform well were placed on the star at a very young age. With Home Alone, a Christmas classic was created, and 20th Century Fox wasted no time getting Culkin on board for the sequel before the actor aged too much. Before returning to the role of Kevin McAllister, Culkin spread his talents around Hollywood in a number of different ways. On the small screen, Culkin voiced and starred in short live-action segments for the short-lived animated series Wish Kid. The show followed a young boy with a magical baseball glove who would get a wish granted each time he patted his glove. Once again extending out to other family members, Kid Culkin was able to get his daughter and Macaulay's sister Quinn a vocal role as the character Katie. To really see Culkin spread his acting chops at a young age, just look at his Home Alone follow-up, My Girl. The coming-of-age story features Anna Klumski as the hypochondriac Veda and Culkin plays the role of her best friend Thomas J. Gone are the screams and antics of young Kevin. Culkin is very soft-spoken and shows a lot of range in the role, which garnered a lot of praise in Hollywood. The young duo even won Best Kiss at the 1992 MTV Movie Awards. Hype was at an all-time high for Culkin, and it was just in time for Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. Essentially a big-budget remake of the first Home Alone, the movie replaced Kevin's house with the city of New York and followed the same successful formula of the first. Instead of the old man, there was the pigeon lady, the wet bandits were now the sticky bandits, and the crappy family vacation now took place in rainy Florida instead of France. Home Alone 2 Lost in New York cemented Culkin's status as a top childhood star and made the Home Alone franchise instant holiday classics up there with the likes of A Christmas Story, It's a Wonderful Life, and Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. With the young child star getting too old for the Home Alone concept, a third film with Culkin was out of the question, so the young star needed to move on to different projects. Culkin himself wanted a break. He was working nearly non-stop and was one of the most in-demand actors in Hollywood. His parents, who should have been advocates for him, only made things worse by signing him onto roles, putting extra pressure on the star, and overworking him well into 1994. Years later, Culkin would open up about these times, claiming his father Kit was both mentally and physically abusive to the young star. They pretty much forced him to continue to work as his fortunes only rose and exceeded over 17 million in earnings. Never mind the royalties he would get year after year of Home Alone holiday reruns. Culkin's break wouldn't come just yet. So what do you do with the innocent face of America that families have come to adore? You make him bad. And how bad? Well, how about a bird flipping psychotic mess who attempts murder on multiple people around him? That's the premise behind 1993's The Good Son. Starring alongside another popular child actor, Elijah Wood, Culkin goes all out in this role that garnered more hype for the shock factor rather than the plot of the film. He still looks like Kevin McAllister, so it's pretty jarring to hear him swear, lie, and attempt to throw a little girl through some thin ice. Audiences were drawn to the rebellious actions of Culkin's character on the big screen. Even with mixed reviews, The Good Son opened number one in September of 1993, and led to a box office total of 44 million. As the 1993 Christmas season arrived, film execs assumed people wanted to see Culkin in another holiday film and they attempted a quick cash grab with a theatrical presentation of the Nutcracker Ballet Musical. The film itself felt rushed and uninspired, trying to use Culkin to bolster the interest. But people were more interested in watching the Home Alone movies, at home. Culkin's performance as a ballet dancer may have seemed random, but this was the course he was on before becoming an actor. Culkin trained in ballet for years before transitioning to acting full-time. If there's one point where Culkin's career as a child star started going downhill, it would be in 1994. The year was filled with Culkin's face all over the big screen, but not with the same impact he had in the years prior. While he was bringing laughs in multiple family films, there was a lot of drama in his real life. 1994 was filled with a string of disappointing films, even though the paychecks were pretty huge. After earning $8 million for Home Alone 2, his asking price came with a huge balloon to these mid-budget movies. First came Getting Even with Dad, the uneven comedy Culkin starred in alongside Ted Danson. The father-son dysfunction and dynamic in the film was probably a little too close to home as he clashed with his father Kit often. Following Getting Even with Dad was The Page Master, a live-action and animation hybrid about a young boy who explores his library and gets transported to a whole other world. 
While the premise sounded great, the execution was missing the great element to really make the movie thrive. Once again trying to thrust Culkin into the forefront of the holiday season, the family comedy Richie Rich was released in December of 1994. The film follows an extremely rich young boy who must foil the plans of an evil guy looking to take his family down. The $40 million movie was a huge bomb at the box office, not even making enough to recoup the film's budget. So why did Culkin's star fade so quickly? He's not exactly to blame for all these films. Richie Rich had a lot of cheesy fun and was a bigger hit on home video when a movie rental was a lot easier than taking the whole movie to theaters. Culkin's downfall and lack of success can also be attributed to two different things, overexposure and getting older. The child actor syndrome is nothing new in Hollywood. All the way from the days of Shirley Temple to more contemporary stars like Amanda Bynes, young stars quickly rise and then fizzle out by their late teens. In the early 90s, Culkin was everywhere. By 1994, audiences were pretty much burned out by the star and roles which seemed to follow his same shtick. As Culkin got older, the wisecracking little boy now became the annoying teen. The same trend happened to many child stars, but Culkin didn't wear out his welcome for too long. Culkin may not have been able to book $8 million roles anymore, but he could have easily continued with roles in films or even ventured into television. The only problem? He didn't want to. Overworked by his father, Culkin filmed over a dozen films in just three or four years. Each role blended into the next, with Culkin missing out on some of the key years of his life. He wanted out. He wanted a normal childhood, or as close as a megastar could get to one. And while his movies may have been missing the mark, Culkin got the biggest break of his career when his parents divorced. After filming on Richie Rich finished, so did the divorce between Macaulay's parents. With his mom on his side and supporting every decision he wanted, Macaulay was no longer being guided by his father. He could set his own path, and he chose to stay as far away from Hollywood as possible. At an age when many aspiring actors are just starting out in the business or attending acting classes, Culkin decided to retire and take his millions with him. Sure, we've all heard of the premature retirements before, but this one stuck. We wouldn't see him at the movies for a very long time. Nine years to be exact. So what did Culkin do during those nine years? Well, he tried to live as normal as possible. He went to high school, made regular friends, and stayed out of the spotlight. During the early 1990s, his days were spent hanging out with Michael Jackson and making cameos in music videos. And Culkin is the godfather to Jackson's three children, Paris, Prince, and Michael Jr. Now he was hanging out with his siblings and friends from school, and he loved every minute of it. There were definitely struggles, but those mostly came from his parents. After the breakup between Culkin's parents, they went through a bitter custody battle. Sure, all seven children were involved, but the main focus was definitely Macaulay and his $50 million fortune he accumulated over the years. Kit eventually dropped the case and gave full custody to Macaulay's mom, but the situation didn't end there. Macaulay did the work and felt like he should be in control of the earnings. So he took both of his parents back to court and was able to legally emancipate himself. As a young teen, he was now in control of his own finances. As for his father Kit, Culkin has cut all ties with him, and the two haven't spoken in years. Kit's abusive treatment to Culkin really had an impact on the actor, and luckily he was able to get away from his grasp at such a young age and grow past his father. With that much money, you are bound to get a little crazy, and Culkin definitely had some fun during his teenage years. There were calls for loud parties at his personal apartment, rumors of drug use, and free-spirited actions from the actor. Of course, this is all normal for most teens, but with child stars like Culkin and Drew Barrymore, they're under the spotlight more and their rebellious years are often highlighted as tabloid cover sins. During his time away from the Hollywood spotlight, Culkin found love multiple times. The first was to his high school sweetheart, Rachel Miner, who he married for two years in 1998. The fast and furious romance quickly fizzled out as Culkin was only 18 at the time of his marriage. After his divorce, Culkin began an eight-year relationship with actress Mila Kunis. The couple tried to stay out of the limelight, but were often pictured together. While they never got engaged or married, many people thought the relationship would last. They broke up in 2010, and Kunis recently blamed the breakup on herself during an interview on Dax Shepard's Armchair Expert podcast. 
Culkin's return to acting seemingly came out of nowhere in 2003 with a role in Party Monster. Like many child stars who have transitioned into adults, Culkin was trying to shed his cute kid image by playing the role of Michael Alec, a drug-addicted partier who ends up murdering a man and getting convicted of murder. While shocking, this trend is nothing new. There's Drew Barrymore in Poison Ivy, Elizabeth Banks in Showgirls, and Selena Gomez in Spring Breakers. Culkin wanted to shed the image of Kevin McAllister as he ventured back into acting, and Party Monster was the furthest thing from the Christmas sweater-wearing 10-year-old. In 2004, Culkin made headlines, not for his return to acting, but for a real-life drug arrest. While riding as a passenger in a friend's vehicle, he was pulled over by police and arrested for possession of marijuana and two controlled substances. He eventually pled guilty to the charges, got served a suspended sentence, and was forced to pay a fine. While Party Monster was more of an indie film, Culkin got even more attention for his role in the dark comedy Saved. Also starring Mandy Moore and Jenna Malone, the film offers a comedic take on the Catholic high school system and various religions. Culkin stole a number of scenes he was in and received a lot of praise for his role as the wheelchair-bound character Roland. Between those movies, Culkin also had a guest-starring role on the show Will and Grace. It's pretty safe to say that the NBC sitcom had a much bigger audience than both Saved and Party Monster. In the days before online tabloids allowed you to instantly look up pictures of any star past and present, for many, Will and Grace was the first true showcase of Culkin as an adult. He brought several laughs playing a lawyer and proved he could still deliver some classic one-liners. So was Culkin back and ready for another big film career? Not quite. His return felt more like a novelty, and the rich actor could certainly afford to pick and choose his roles. He starred in the 2009 TV series Kings, but didn't have too many returns to the big screen. The freedom of choice thanks to his fortunes allows him to focus on personal projects or his former band known as the Pizza Underground. He has really lived a unique life when compared with some other child actors. One of the main differences between Culkin and other child stars is the timelessness of Home Alone. Home Alone and its sequel air every single Christmas on multiple networks and is easily available through digital DVD and Blu-ray. We all know Macaulay Culkin as the 10-year-old boy trying to protect his family's house and take down the evil wet bandits. He never ages and stays that young in our minds. Even children who weren't even born when Home Alone came out grew up seeing Culkin at the young age. Take another child star like Elijah Wood. Movies like The Adventures of Huck Finn, North, and Flipper all came and went. As Wood aged, so did the people seeing their movies. No one still watches Flipper to start the summer. By the time he appeared in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Wood was grown up and people adjusted to the transformed child star. The same journey also occurred for other child stars of the 90s like Thora Birch or Christina Ricci. With Culkin, his legacy has gone beyond just the movies themselves. His face and likeness as a young boy is used on a plethora of Home Alone merch. We're talking action figures, Funko Pop collectibles, t-shirts, ornaments, video games, board games, coloring books, and picture books. His his childhood is pretty much trapped in an endless holiday purgatory that seems to only spread each Christmas season. So much so, in fact, that the actor himself has referred to the time as Macaulay season. It gives a renewed interest and curiosity into the star that extends well beyond the typical where are they now videos and articles. In a recent interview on The Ellen Show, Culkin stated he still gets requests to do the Home Alone screen face and has to constantly deny fans, mainly due to the fact that he's 37 now. So what's next for Macaulay Culkin? While we'd love to see him return to a new home alone as the father of Kevin's own children, don't expect that anytime soon. The star has dabbled in a number of different projects. He wrote and published the semi-autobiographical novel Junior, toured with his comedy band The Pizza Underground, voiced characters for his buddy Seth Green's show Robot Chicken, and appeared in multiple episodes of The Jim Gaffigan Show. Currently, Culkin has come out of the woodworks to help promote his website and podcast Bunny Ears. Making appearances on TV programs like The Tonight Show, it was the first time Culkin has purposely stepped into the limelight in several years. Listening to the podcast, there are multiple interviews with wrestling personalities like Chris Jericho and Cody Rhodes. And it's no secret that Culkin had a major interest in pro wrestling over the years. He made a surprise appearance on a 2009 episode of Monday Night Raw, and in late 2017, he actually participated in a match for an independent wrestling show. As his podcast grows, former and new fans of Culkin get to see a whole different side of him as he's all grown up and has changed a lot over the years. 
Culkin definitely hasn't had the worst downfall when compared to other child stars, but his life was filled with a lot of ups and downs. Despite the hard work ethic his father forced on him, Culkin is a part of Hollywood history, and he will always be listed as one of the top child stars of all time. Seeing him today fills fans with nostalgia, and Culkin has started to publicly embrace his past even further. Things could have ended up a lot worse for the star given the circumstances, but just like the final scenes in Home Alone, Kevin is standing at his window smiling as Demon who haunted him get taken away, much like the past demons in Macaulay's life. So what's your favorite Macaulay Culkin movie? Can you imagine growing up the way he did? Should there be a Home Alone reboot? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to Screen Rant on YouTube so you can stay up to date with our awesome videos. Thanks for watching.